Fun fact, the Pixel 8 is better than the Pixel 8 Pro. Now the Pixel 8 is better than the Pixel 8 Pro at this moment because so far, it's really giving me a much better experience. It's smoother, I'm running into less problems, it fits more comfortably in my hand, and it's cheaper. And if anyone were to ask me which phone that I think that they should get at this moment, I'm easily going with the Pixel 8. And I don't know about you guys, but lately, I feel like the cheaper to lower range phones have been given much more value to its customers, kind of like modern day sports. See, when it came to professional sports back in the day, of course you had your Michael Jordan, your Tom Brady's, and your Lionel Messi's. And since you had more star power back then, a lot of times the lower to mid end of players weren't bad, but they aren't like how they are now. See, in the NBA, NFL, and many other professional sports, as time went on, the middle to lower tier players have been getting better and better as the years go on, technology has advanced, and players are going through better development since the knowledge of the game increased. And that's kind of how I look at the Pixel 8. It's not LeBron James, it's not Kobe Bryant, it's more like Jordan Poole on Golden State. He's not the superstar, but he's much better than the average player back in the day that weren't superstars. And that's where I feel like technology is headed. You no longer need to spend a thousand bucks or more to get an amazing phone. The superstars aren't the only ones that can ball out. The Pixel 8, Galaxy S23 FE, and iPhone 15 are giving people a much better bang for their buck. And as I said before, cheaper phones are getting better and better by the year. And besides me trying to squeeze in sports every chance I get, there was a major problem that carried on from the Pixel 8 Pro over to the Pixel 8 and that's the processor. Now the Tensor G3 chip has been pretty horrible at playing power heavy games. Like for example, here I am playing Asphalt 9 on my Pixel 8, and here is me playing on my iPhone 15. And you can see just how terrible the Pixel 8 looks. It's laggy, the frame rate is terrible, and I'm genuinely shocked that I'm still having this problem. But besides that major problem, I wanna share my experience with the Pixel 8 to show you guys how it holds up after a couple months of use. Now over the past few weeks, I've tested how long the Pixel 8 lasts with medium to high usage. I try my best not to do too much, and I vowed that I would use the Pixel 8 like the regular phone that it is. I use social media moderately, texted friends and family, made phone calls, checked emails, and watched a ton of videos on YouTube, and I was able to rack up four to six hours of screen time a day, and this is honestly where beginner flagship phones like the Pixel 8 or iPhone 15 perform the best. On most days, I'm getting four hours, but that was great in my book. I'm ending my day with around 20 to 30% by the end of the day, which was just enough time for me to collect data on who this phone is truly for. And since I was using my phone moderately, I didn't feel the need to try to preserve battery life. I didn't turn on power saving mode, and I used it to its full capacity. The Pixel 8 supports 27 watt charging, which isn't the greatest, but isn't the worst either. It takes about an hour and a half to reach 100% on average, and I found that it can get hot as hell whenever I use my wireless charger, which was very annoying. But besides that, the charging experience was very smooth since I mainly charge my phone overnight, and I tried my best to plan my charges accordingly. I was also surprised that a lot of little features within the software didn't take a huge chunk of my battery, things like the always on display, 5G, and high brightness were on, but I still was able to last a full day, which was pretty impressive for a phone at this price. Taking a look at how the build quality is holding up after a couple months of use, the Pixel 8 was 50-50 for me. I don't like glossy bags because it attracts a ton of fingerprints, but at the same time, it's one of the best looking phones in 2023. I would have preferred the Pixel 8 to take things from other phones, like how the Galaxy S23 and iPhone 15 all adapted matte backs. After using this phone for a couple months, I got tired of the fingerprints making it look dirty, and I had to settle and get a case. But besides that problem that has been annoying me since the Pixel 6 Pro, the Pixel 8 is one of the most comfortable phones of 2023. It's a very rounded phone that knows how to complement my hand whether it's big or small and whether I'm holding it to watch a video or just scroll through an app. It's always kept that same consistency. The flat display has always been a personal favorite. The buttons are very clicky and premium. The ports and mics are very discreet and despite the fact that it's not the top flagship phone, I still consider it to have that quality feel after a couple months of use. Now in terms of weight and feel in hand, the Pixel 8 is on the heavier side of the spectrum. It weighs about 187 grams compared to 171 grams on the 15, and this really added to its upscale feel. It's not heavy to the point where it can be uncomfortable to hold for a very long period of time, but it is heavy enough for you to notice at first and get used to it after. The Pixel 8 has Corning Gorilla Glass Victus, and I have dropped it twice since I first got it. There has been a little scratch on the display. It's very hard to see on camera, but it is there. And my problem with Pixels have never been crack resistance. It's kind of always been about the poor scratch resistance. Since the Pixel 6, series, I've always had a bunch of scratches on my Pixel phones from putting my phone in my pocket to very little drops. 
and this has always been my pet peeve when it comes to Pixel phones. But besides that, the Pixel 8 has a really good build quality that is holding up very well. I personally would recommend a screen protector for the scratches on the front and a case for the mini fingerprints on the back. Now looking at display, the Pixel 8 6.2 inch actual display has been holding up very well. And even though I think that it does need some improvements, it pretty much can go toe to toe with the iPhone 15 and Galaxy S23 FE in certain aspects. The resolution looks amazing. The brightness has significantly improved and it has a nice big flat display. But what's wrong? Well, the Pixel 8's colors don't pop as much as the iPhone 15 and Galaxy S23. Like those phones not only give me a great viewing experience, but they also add that color and vibrancy that the Pixel 8 is missing. And don't get me wrong, if you are someone who has never used any of these other phones, you won't have a problem with the Pixel 8. But as someone who was constantly testing out phones, I feel like it's my job to compare and give you guys the best option. But besides the colors not popping as much as I wanted them to, the viewing experience is great. And I feel like any of you guys who want to buy this phone will agree. Something else that I loved about the Pixel 8 display was how much I was able to use the screen. I loved how I had the very tiny hole punch camera that barely gets in the way when watching videos. The option to use swipe gestures is great as well because there are no extra buttons on my display. And again, it makes the 6.2 inch display feel bigger than it is. The brightness is still superb. Until this day, it really shocks me because Pixels have always had the lowest brightness when compared to other smartphones, but I'm really glad that this is one of the upgrades that Google has made from the Pixel 6 and 7. The responsiveness on the Pixel 8 is insane. Like right here, you can see me scrolling through a simple app, and it's pretty insane how fast it can get if you want to go crazy. The 120Hz refresh rate does balance it out a bit to ultimately make the scrolling feel very smooth, and I feel like this is where the Pixel is at its best, when it focuses on being incredibly smooth. The fingerprint sensor has gotten better over the past few generations. Yes, it is slower than the S23 and iPhone 15, but I think that this is the first time where Google has made a normal feeling fingerprint sensor, and I hope that they keep improving it from here. Facial recognition is the worst when compared to other phones that I've talked about. It doesn't really work well at night, and it messes up more than it should, but I mainly use my fingerprint, so it doesn't bother me too much. Now, moving on to speakers, I'm not going to say that the Pixel 8 speakers are awful, because they're not, but I will say that they aren't as good as the competition. Many times, I'm turning my volume all the way up, and I still become disappointed, and instead of telling you guys, I'm going to show you and compare. Now moving on to camera, the Pixel 8 provides nothing but top tier quality photos, whether it's selfies, outside shots, and even inside shots. As always, Pixel phones have always been good at capturing darker skin tones, the blur is subtle but not too much, and the added lighting was just right. Night mode photos are the only photos where I was questioning. They're okay at best, and I feel like the added lighting didn't help the quality of the photo too much. Zoom photos on the Pixel 8 were great. The more I zoomed in, I was very impressed with its consistency, and the quality and sharpness kept up very well. Inside photos didn't disappear either. The selfies were very nice, so I went where I could to get the best lighting, and they were extremely similar to my Pixel 8 Pro. Outside photos were the best in terms of lighting and quality, very professional, very exquisite. And this is where the Pixel 8's camera truly shines. Now the videos on the Pixel 8 were good, but not great. My face will look weird at times, but other than that, the outer camera did its best work. You can shoot up to 4K and up to 60 frames per second, which is pretty standard. Many times I like to use the Pixel as my secondary camera when shooting videos, and the Pixel 8 was one of my favorites. Stabilization was solid, and there were plenty of options when it came to different modes that you could use. And I wanna share some extra footage that I took with my Pixel 8 to show you guys how the videos handle different environments. And all right, you guys, that's it for my review on the Pixel 8. It's a very solid phone that comes with problems, but the positives are worth it. And let me know down in the comments. Do you think that the Pixel 8 is better than the Galaxy S23 or iPhone 15? Let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Peace.